Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Missy if you're new here. In today's video, I actually wanted to dive into the whole Nara Smith and Onezwa Bola controversy because I feel like there are so many conversations that can be had about this beef alone. So for a couple of weeks now, I've been seeing a lot of controversy surrounding everyone's favorite cook from scratch creator and TikTok Chad wife who really isn't a Chad wife, but I guess you can call her that. I guess that's what her content is is about whatever the one and only nara smith in my opinion nara smith is a cooking from scratch icon and a lot of people know that i personally love nara smith from the way she dresses to her unique ideas well onezwa would disagree that they're unique to her soothing voice it's not a secret that nara is in the group of cooking creators who have taken it to the next level not only making popular dishes but also making things like toothpaste cough drops and condiments she's gained an immense amount of popularity for her work and many have gone on to create memes and parodies about her exaggerating her soft voice and her bougie-esque style of content creation this morning, my husband woke up with a little cough and sore throat. I'm going to be making lemon menthol cough drops using simple ingredients we all already have at home. I started by pouring some Manuka honey from New Zealand into a pot. When I realized I ran out of eucalyptus oil, I went over to my eucalyptus grove and plucked a leaf so I can extract the oils. I get my eucalyptus plants flown in fresh every week from an elderly monk named Oliver in Tasmania. Next, I got a lemon from my tree and got some fresh lemon juice for my mixture. Then I went out to my spice haven and grabbed some cinnamon sticks for my mixture. <gasps> And with all of the love and support, I think it is to be expected that not everyone will feel the same about her, but we will get into that very, very shortly. Regardless of the fact that Nara isn't doing anything new here, I think her personality, look, and lifestyle all come together to make her content very much uniquely hers. She and her husband are both experienced successful models who had kids young naming them names that most consider to be absurd like whimsy lou our daughter's name is rumble honey smith our son's name is slim easy smith and then we just had little whimsy lou smith <gasps> she wears classy outfits that most of us would destroy if we wore while cooking and she often has some ridiculous story about how she ended up in the kitchen on that particular date such as my kids were hungry this morning, so I started making cereal from scratch. Or, we were just about to go to bed when we realized we were out of toothpaste, so we started making it from scratch. Like, girl, be so fucking for real. Maybe when you reach a certain level of wealth, you're afforded the luxury of time to be able to do this sort of stuff. But I am almost 100% sure that Nara is trolling. I am almost 100% sure that Nara is sitting there cackling as she writes her scripts thinking what ridiculous story am I going to come up with this time. I feel like Nara thinks it's so funny when people are in the comments going crazy about they requested this 8 hours ago and you're now giving it to them. I think she thinks it's the most hilarious thing ever because... It is content creation at the end of the day and people are taking it so seriously. I can almost guarantee you that the things that you see in her videos just don't go down in the exact order that the story is telling it. After all, this is the case for most of the things that you see on social media in general, whether it's TikTok or another platform. Most people's goals on social media is to create engaging content share their ideas in an engaging way that gets people to actually stop scrolling and i think that nara does an excellent job at doing this now like i said before it should be expected that not everybody is going to find the same joy in her content as i do in this age where information spreads so quickly it's hard for ideas to be deemed original because it seems like you were never the first one to do anything and for nara smith things were about to get very messy because a South African woman by the name of Unezwa has claimed that Nara Smith has been stealing her ideas and creating content for profit. Now from what I know she makes claims that Nara got her fresh mozzarella cheese idea from her content and since then she has also taken the idea of making boba from scratch from her. 
She complains that many people have been comparing her to Nara Smith for a minute now and this offends her. She knows that she didn't start cooking from scratch but she does believe that Nara has stolen some of her ideas. Now this drama gets more complicated when seemingly deleted comments are revealed from Nara to Onezwa who Nara claims she doesn't know and now an alleged cease and desist from Nara upon hearing the rumors that she is stealing ideas. But the funny thing is, once the cease and desist came out, a trusted source claimed that Nara actually did not send a cease and desist to Onezwa and that the email posted by Onezwa on Twitter was fabricated. But honestly, I don't know. All I know is the drama brought some very interesting questions for me about originality and whether or not it actually exists today. Are there any more new ideas or is the same true? nothing new exists under the sun. So let's talk about why it appears that so many people think that originality doesn't exist or rather why social media is leading so many people to think that originality doesn't exist. Because please recognize that if social media didn't exist, I don't know if we would be having this conversation. Social media to me is the reason why so many have adopted this belief. If we didn't have so much access to people's creations, I just don't know if we would be talking about this. I mean, sure, if people were inventing the same products and the same gadgets over and over back in the day and we kept seeing the same stuff on TVs and billboards in the absence of social media, then perhaps. But other than that, I just don't know. But maybe I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So the thing with social media, and I know a lot of people get this, is that it has so many of the same style videos that together they make what we refer to as trends. There are trending topics, trending sounds, and even trending content formats. For example, the black wife effect trend, which I spoke about in my last video, please go check that out if you feel like it. It consists of all videos following the same format, the before slideshow followed by the after slideshow, thus generating thousands of videos with that format, turning it into a trend. Not just the black wife trend, but even the, the way that you edit the videos to fit into this trend, it's all the same. And it's triggered so many people, but I, I know that's besides the point. The point is, trends go viral and have a tendency to encourage more and more people to make the same format video, thus making the content repetitive and deemed unoriginal. Also, when it comes to these trends, a lot of social media users partake because they know that it is being actively searched for and even pushed, making them more likely to be seen. This isn't just the case for viral trends, but also viral topics. This is why we so often see so many content creators creating videos talking about the same topics. There's this thought process that if the algorithm rewarded you for talking about this specific topic, then it should reward me as well. And obviously, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And some people go as far as to react to a viral video, hardly contributing anything to the conversation at all, or to even use information from another creator's video and act like it's an idea of their own. And to piggyback off of that point, this is why originality seems to be so dead. Because it appears like so many people are making content and only a small percentage of those people are actually passionate about content creation. When you're passionate, I feel like you put way more effort into what you're doing and you actually want to contribute something new even if you're addressing a popular topic that has been discussed over and over and over again when you're going just based off of strategy though and you're just trying to make as much money as you can you're gonna just do your best to try to appease the algorithm with no regard for how original the content really is the fact that so many people are creating content alone makes it hard to stand out because the likelihood of someone posting an idea before you is simply higher but just because some people have done something before you doesn't mean that your contribution is going to be worthless. And you see this all the time. Before people can make a video, it's clear that they went and sought out other people's opinions. They go check what other people are saying about the topic to see if their opinion is correct. It's an opinion. It doesn't have to agree with everyone else. And besides, it's so boring to do that. Why would we even want to go out of our way to ensure that our opinion aligns with someone else's? While some may complain that there's too much content out there and that's the reason 
why we're all messed up and can't even think for ourselves anymore and so on let's never forget that this mass amount of content being produced has also done wonders spreading awareness for important issues someone's unoriginal post could be the very reason why you know about a global issue that otherwise you would have never known about we're in the day and age where everything is being shared on social media including news including important things that we should all know about and we kind of have to appreciate that as well in addition we have to remember how pointless it is to argue for originality when we should be aware of how connected we are not only because we all share the unique experience of being here on this floating rock at this point in time but also we need to recognize that our ideas are connected through similar environments and similar experiences what's trending here may not be what's trending in the caribbean but also we have the ability to share our ideas with people in the caribbean I think that is a beautiful thing and we don't need so much pushback on coming across similar ideas on social media. And I also think it's kind of silly to compare right now to the past, claiming that there was so much originality back then. Just for one, we were not there. And on top of that, social media didn't even exist to highlight people being inspired by each other. For us to even be aware of this in the first place. People just didn't have the same access to other people's worlds that they do now. And just because they weren't aware that so many people were thinking the same thing as them, doesn't mean that it wasn't happening. Now those are my thoughts and personally I don't find Nara Smith to be a content or idea thief. Honestly, not even in the slightest bit. To me their content just isn't that similar. I ain't never seen Nara Smith milk a cow, ever. And she doesn't take us outside to show us that she's picking things from the garden to gather her ingredients for her recipes. But it's not even just that. It's the aesthetics, the storytelling. Nothing is really the same between these two creators other than the fact that they both cook from scratch. And even then, I feel like Onezwa takes it to a completely different level. But anyway, I do want to know what you guys think. So please leave me a comment down below. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you feel like it and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.